everybody, Tristan here. So today I'm gonna do a highly requested video. A lot of you guys asked to see my essays. So I think that this is really, really important because for those of you who don't have perfect test scores like I did it, I think it's really important to make yourself a person and at that a likable person in the eyes of the admissions officer so that you're not just another number or another paper in the stack. You want to individualize yourself and make them, basically you just want to make them look at your paper twice. You have to show that you have something to bring to that school, something unique. So I think the essays are really important for this reason. It really makes you stand out. So today I'm going to give you guys some tips on things that I did when I was writing my essays and some things that you guys can do that I've seen other people do as well. My first tip would be to read other successful college essays. So I mentioned these books in my other video too, but I'm going to mention them again. This one is called 50 Successful Stanford Application Essays. So this one really helped me for Stanford specifically because it gave me an idea of what they were looking for. And then this one is called College Essays That Made a Difference. It's by Princeton and it has a lot of essays in there. And it categorizes it by schools that the people got into at the very end. So I just read the ones that pertain to Stanford and UCLA. But if you guys don't wanna buy these books, you can always look at YouTube videos like this one where people read their essays out loud. Now, my next tip would be to outline your essays in advance. So, I feel like personally I am kind of a strong writer. Writing has always been something that I kind of enjoy doing and I think that what made me a good writer was reading a lot. I read a lot of books growing up just like Harry Potter and books like that. I really enjoyed reading. So if you feel like your writing skills are kind of lacking there are writing workshops online. There's ones on YouTube, ones on Khan Academy that you can look at. And you can also just try and read more. I feel like that really did help my writing skills improve. Or if you're in a time crunch, then just watch videos on that. So when you go to outline your essays, the way that I personally did it was I listed every activity that I had taken part in and things that I was gonna take part in during my senior year. And then I copy and pasted all of the essay prompts from the Stanford questions. They're online, you can find them. And I categorize kind of each activity into the essay that I wanted to put it into. So this changed later on. I did revamp it a few times. So that's why I would recommend doing this in advance. I did it in the summer over my junior year after I watched lots of college essay videos. So I think that this really, really helped me because I did some of the difficult part, like the fore planning of it. When it came time for me to actually write my essays, I'm not gonna lie, I had bad writer's block for a while. I just couldn't figure out what I wanted to say or the way that I wanted to say it. So maybe two to three weeks before the application was due, I just sat down and I said, screw it, I'm gonna write these essays because I don't wanna be stressing out a lot later on. So I literally just sat down and I wrote all of my essays in one day. However, for the next two to three weeks, I did spend a lot of time going over them. I edited them a lot and I got outside help. So I asked one of my English teachers and my mom helped me. And also my counselor looked over it a little bit and all of their constructive criticism really helped me make the finalized essays that I was really happy with. So if you guys want some more tips, I can do a completely different video on essay writing for colleges. But for now, let's just get into the essays. So first, I'm going to read my Common App essay. I only applied to Stanford and USC through the Common App. So this is my Common App essay. The prompt that I answered was, the lessons we take from obstacles we encounter can be fundamental to later success. Recount a time when you faced a challenge, setback, or failure. How did it affect you and what did you learn from the experience? So. Here we go. Woo. Starting from a young age, I've had to work harder to excel in my academic endeavors. I was tested for gate services twice, once mandatorily in third grade and once via teacher request in sixth grade. Both times I fell short of qualifying and was deemed ineligible for gifted and talented education services. 
I was unable to participate in several extracurriculars and limited in my class choices entering middle school. However, I was fortunate enough to have the most brilliant source of inspiration going forward, my mother. After being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, she continued unceasingly to be an exceptional mother and through this proved I'm capable of anything in life to which I put the time and effort. I held on to this core value entering middle school and was able to earn my way into higher level course options through my grades. Due to effort and help from others, I've been able to become a CSF Lifetime member and maintain a spot in the top 1% of my class. While volunteering in special education classrooms throughout high school, I've witnessed students work 10 times harder than others to achieve their goals. I now see that the greatest glory is due not to the naturally gifted, but the hardest working and most earnest. Despite countless hours of study, the SAT testing process proved to be an instance in which I was unable to accurately reflect my potential. Overcoming the barrier of not being labeled as a gifted student has given me the gift of perseverance and resilience. Over time, I have gained confidence in the knowledge that life success is measured by more than test scores. However, I recognize that struggling with standardized test scores is a beautiful privilege in comparison with the issues some face on a day-to-day -day basis. It has always been my dream to start a nonprofit and truly give back to others in a way that has a positive, direct impact. After interning in the office of Shirley Weber, the 79th District Assembly member, and becoming locally recognized for activism within my community, I felt confident enough to put a long-time dream into action. I have always been socially active, but one particular injustice has drawn my attention for the past few years. The harsh malpractice towards the occupants of the migrant caravan, which has been detained in Tijuana. Having lived in Chula Vista, California for the past seven years, this issue is both close to my heart and a geographically near issue, happening only about 10 miles from my own home. As I continued to absorb information about matters at the border, I was repeatedly left with a strong desire to help those suffering. Coming from a historically marginalized group, I have learned that injustice thrives when good people remain silent. With the help of various friends and mentors, I was able to found Youth for Border Aid, a nonprofit organization centered on leading donation drives at various high schools around San Diego, with all items going to those in need. Starting a nonprofit was a realm completely unknown to me. However, my perseverance driven by passion allowed me to seek out and connect with various teens from around San Diego with a shared desire to help make a difference in our community. I also reached out to the nonprofit Border Angels, meeting even more amazing driven people committed to having a positive impact. Having seen both justice and its opposite firsthand now, I'm eager and capable to work towards the former. In the end, I'm thankful I didn't pass GATE because a systemized stamp of approval before I had accomplished anything might have kept me from realizing the deeper and more meaningful approval one gets from working fingers to the bone and then seeing some good come out of it. I've learned that relationship now and the lesson is a precious gift. Okay, a lot to unpack, a lot to unpack. So I knew that I wanted to mention my nonprofit in my Common App essay, but I wanted to relate it to a bigger theme. And I realized that also, I really did want to highlight some of the character traits that really matter to me, like the fact that I am a hard worker and I try to be resilient and persevere. So I wanted to take all of that mess and put it together. And that's pretty much what I did. Okay, so going on to the questions. So that was my big, big Common App essay. That would apply to any school that uses the Common App. Now I'm gonna read my short essays. These are specific to Stanford. Reflect on an idea or experience that makes you excited about learning. When I was seven years old, my mom was diagnosed with a degenerative disease, multiple sclerosis. It was equally fascinating and horrifying to hear that within her own body, her T lymphocytes were attacking the healthy cells around her spinal cords, myelin sheath, and brain, causing various health effects that worsen over time. As a young child, I couldn't begin to understand this terminology, which is precisely why I made it my goal to learn as much as possible about this insidious disease attacking my mom's body. As a result of reaching out over this past summer, I was able to intern at the La Jolla Institute for Immunology with Dr. Abnon Altman. 
I was ecstatic to become an intern at the Institute and take part in groundbreaking research relating to cancer and immunology. Although brief due to my six week summers, my time spent at the lab was invaluable and truly cemented in my interest in scientific research. My mentor had a significant impact on my experience, creating presentations for each day's task. These presentations piqued my curiosity, inspiring me to do more research about T lymphocytes and cancer immunology at home. It was mind boggling to learn how these bodily malfunctions could be mimicked and studied in the laboratory environment. Although the causes of autoimmune diseases like my mom's are unknown and currently incurable, I believe that with enough optimism, curiosity, and courage, these diseases can be cured within my lifetime, and I aim to contribute to this. Next one. Note to my future roommate. Dear future roomie, I can't wait to meet you. As excited as I am to start this next chapter of my life, I must admit I left my heart in San Diego with my goofy rescue dog, Biggie. As I type this, the little cuddle monster is swatting at my hands, demanding my constant attention. I hate to say it, but if you're a cat person, I'm not quite sure it'll work out. Just kidding. Although it's true, I'm a diehard dog lover. I'm also always open to learning new things from people and gaining a broadened perspective, even cat lovers. If you love TED Talks and Carol Dweck as much as I do, you might recognize this growth mindset I try to maintain. Beyond my love of dogs, I have an equally intense love of dance and by association, music. I'd love to share music with you as one of my favorite things about meeting someone new is learning about their music taste. It's amazing to me that there seems to be an infinite amount of music to discover, so don't be surprised if you see me humming or getting jiggy around the dorm. I can't wait to learn about your passions too. Hopefully, as we pursue what we love and learn more than ever before, we have time to listen to tunes and watch Netflix together. There's nothing more epic than ending a stressful week with a heartwarming rom-com or thriller. Stranger Things season four, and then Trace, I sent my name. Okay, this one is my personal favorite. Okay, something meaningful to you and why? Spelling didn't come easy as a five-year-old, but there was one word I had memorized by heart, my middle name, McClure. As I grew older, I began to take note of my peers' middle names, something that most children gleefully neglect. McClure seemed so peculiar compared to the many I was exposed to. My confusion-tinged curiosity led me to ask my parents why this name was mine to ponder, revealing that it was my paternal great-grandfather's last name, M.T. McClure. I researched McClure as if it were a foreign code, learning that it is of Scottish descent. How was it that my great-grandpa, a black man, ended up with a Gaelic last name? After learning the history of my people, McClure was no longer M.T.'s, but the name of a slave master his father had belonged to. It felt as though I was carrying my ancestor's shame, the name of a man who deserved to be forgotten. It was only after approaching my dad with these misgivings that I finally came to appreciate what role my middle name plays in my identity. McClure is not a reminder of oppression, but a celebration of a man who survived great struggles without losing the kindness in his heart. It is a reminder of not the degradation of my people, but the strength and power behind my heritage. The evolution of my understanding of my middle name is a fundamental part of who I am today. These are the short questions. I don't know if I'm going to get them, but most significant challenge society faces. Egocentrism is at the root of climate change, social oppression, and many other issues. Ironically, in an age of technology, injustice and catastrophe are displayed more intimately and yet seem less personally urgent than ever before. Somehow our interconnectedness needs to be rediscovered. We need to relearn empathy. Historical moment or event. I would want to be present to watch the Joyner Truth give her Ain't I a Woman speech in 1851. As a black woman born in a time of extreme oppression in America, she was an outspoken activist and noted as a renowned orator. I wish to hear her power. What do you read, listen to, or watch? Children of Blood and Bone. Empowering, beautiful yet horrifying. $2 a day, living on almost nothing in America. Saddening, but reality. The Covenant series, guilty pleasure. Born a crime, amazing. 
So that was it. That was all of my essays for Stanford. I will be doing my UC essay video next. And the UCs that I got into was UCLA, UCSB, UCSD, and UCI. That'll be coming soon. Stay tuned. I hope this has helped. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys. Deuces.